What is up guys? Welcome to the Computer Information Highway for your Java programming tutorial number 26. And if you remember last time, it was a quick little update video and just a little bit of a cleanup code in here uh, in which we made this a little bit easier to read and it's a little bit nicer and we are utilizing a new try, uh, a try with block that was recently implemented into Java 8. So if you wanted a little bit more information on that, you can go check out the last video that we did on this program. So continuing where we are off in our phone book, we are going to be looking for a number. Um, so we're going to be reading in a file, uh, getting, getting, going through each line and looking for somebody's name, which is the argument that we're passing up here through the top. And we're going to search through the file for our uh, name and the associated phone number with it. Um, and it's going to be really easy. It's just going to be like um, uh, the phone number or the number associated with uh, whoever's name it is, is like, and then it's going to display the person's phone number. Um, so you'll see, this will be pretty cool. Um, we've worked with a little bit of uh, We've worked with a little bit of this before, so this is really just going to be more reinforcement on what we've been learning. So let's get right into it. So we're going to be uh, taking in some... We're, so in order to read the file in, we need to find some way. We need to use something in order to get the information, some sort of stream of information. And what Scanner does is Scanner actually provides us with a stream. and in the parentheses here, we were choosing where the stream is coming from, uh, which in this situation was system in, which would be the user's input. But we can use scanner. We can use scanner with some other input source. Um, and in this situation, we're going to be using it with a file. So it's going to bring in file information, and it's going to be able to read the file, and we'll be able to find all the information that we need for this. So with our try catch block, we're going to be try scanner n equals and then rather than doing system in we are going to use file oops sorry we are going to use file we need to create a new file object here because we need to pass in a file or we need to pass in an object that the scanner is going to be referencing so new file and then what was the name of our file? It was, I think, file.txt. I was feeling pretty original. Uh, oops. Oh, man. All right. All right. So this is just going to be creating a stream uh, coming in from our file, which we need to import. Um, and when we bring this in, we're going to be able to use this. It's going to close on its own, so we don't need to worry about closing it uh, if it's necessary. So in here, we can now manipulate uh, what we're going to be doing with the information. So if you remember in, uh, you can get in dot next line um, or in dot uh, like next int I know it's somewhere in here right here or in dot next int so we still have those functions or those methods available uh, to use for us except now it's going to be using in this this file as the source so what do we want to do so in order to go through all of the people in our address book we need to start at the top and work our way down and when we find the user we're going to print out the name so we can do that relatively easily and we want to be checking first if uh, there even is anything in this file and anything in the neck in the line that it's going to be reading so uh, our scanner has an uh, has this function has this method here called has next which is going to uh, sort of like read ahead and see if anything exists beyond this point that it's at right now and if it does uh, this is gonna this is gonna return true um, so we're gonna be using that as our uh, condition for our loop 
And so while it has next, which is has next line, has next anything, uh, maybe it does have next line. Maybe has next line would work better for us because everything is put on a single line uh, that the information is on. And so we can start reading in the information uh, from our from our uh, scanner from our file. So we can do string s equals in dot next line, and this is just going to read in the line and store it in this string variable, which just holds holds uh, like characters, etc. Uh, and it's going to store it in here. And rather than just storing it as a string, we want uh, a specific set of information. So if you look at the file here, um, the information that we're putting in is the name, there's a colon here, and then there's the phone number that's associated with it. So rather than reading in the whole line as just one single text line, we can we can use one of the string functions that are available to us and it's called split. And it allows us to split up a string into multiple parts and store it as an array. So we can use string s. If we can add the array to it, the array bounds for it, and then we can use the split the split function that we have. And what we have to do is we have to define a uh, set of characters that will tell us where uh, each of the information is going to be coming from, um, or what two sides of it it's going to be coming from. So you'll see. So if we put in a colon here, it's going to say from the left and to the right of this colon, it will split it up into two different arrays. Um, and actually, this would probably be a little bit more efficient and better if we were to throw this out here. That way it just reuses the same variable and doesn't have to constantly uh, reopen the memory and close the memory while it's in this loop. It can, it can just redefine what it is. Um, so it's probably better for that. So this is going to read in the next line. And we're going to say if s dot equals, or we're going to say if s of 0 dot equals, because what, what this is doing, or what this split function is doing, is it's splitting the string of characters up into multiple parts of an array. So you'll find that this is actually going to be, uh, it's actually going to contain two sets of information, the name and the phone number. And since we start at zero, the first index is going to give us the name. So if s of zero dot equals, and we can just pass in name because we're just checking to see if the names are the same, then we could say system out dot print line uh, the number associated with, and then we're going to put name. is and in order to get the phone number out of it we just need to do s of 1 because it's going to be the second bit of information that we're getting from it and we run that when we run that later that's going to that's going to work well for us uh, it's probably will just fill in nicely and it's probably going to display pretty nicely too so maybe Maybe we want to check to see if it was able to find somebody or not. What happens What happens in this situation if you can't find uh, the person that you're looking for? Um, in this case, we need to be able to check for that. What we can do is we can create a Boolean, which we're going to set, uh, we're going to give it a name. I'm going to just give it the name found person because we're going to check to see if we have found this person already. And by default, we are not going to you're not going to have found this person. Um, so when we do find this person then we want to set found person equal to true and then after everything this is probably better suited off after the while loop Alright, so if this is found after the while loop, that means it has gone through every instance of this file, and if it still has not found this person, 
uh, then it's going to say it could not find the person that we were looking for. So let's go ahead and test this real quick. So if you remember, we have these two people in here. So we're going to look for the person. And let's say Alex M. And it says the number that is associated with Alex M is 111-222-3456. Uh, so let's just test that again. Um, find number. And in this situation, we're going to be we're going to look for someone that's uh, not not here, uh, so that we can cause it to break, so that we can see that this this part of the this part of the function is working properly. Um, so let's say Joseph. All right, and it says it could not find Joseph because he is not here. Uh, so that is obviously working properly. It went through every part of the file and figured out that it just wasn't there. Um, so it told us that it wasn't there because if it was, it would have changed the value of found person to true, uh, causing this to not execute anymore. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So that is all we're yeah, that is all we're going to be doing for today's video. In the next video, we're going to be working on our last function. Uh, I don't know if we'll finish it up in the next video or if it will be the following video. So either way, I'll see you guys next time.